Police Chief Paul McDonald updated town council on the success of a town ordinance that limits hours of operation for area businesses. A plan to create a second cultural district in Barnstable moves forward and find out when the next town council meeting will be held. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Friday, September 13th, 2013. I'm Sarah Mannell. Police Chief Paul McDonald addressed town council last night. He briefed the council on a town ordinance that limits the hours of operation for local businesses. McDonald says that ordinance has had a positive impact in Barnstable over the years. This ordinance was designed for a very specific reason, you know, from the years between 1996 when the problem started up to 2006. The ordinance was adopted on May 18, 2006. We had a very unique problem to most uh, police agencies in Southeast of Massachusetts. There was a large gathering of individuals, particularly on Friday and Saturday nights after the bars closing. It started first at the 7-Eleven and Burger King on North Street and Bassett Lane. And then as the crowds outgrew that location, they moved to Christie's Market at the corner of Burses in 2028. 20, where at times it was, it was uh, not unusual to have 250, 300, 350 individuals there all congregating there. And we had multiple, multiple calls for service. The, policemen, the police department dealt with this problem for a number of years. And what they came up with, working, working with the town council then, the town management and the town attorney's office, they come up with a very peaceful resolution to the problem. And the problem and the, and, the, and the solution was the enactment of this ordinance, which closed everything down between 1 and 3 a.m. And as soon as this was enacted, the problem ended. The problem then moved to the town of Yarmouth. And then everyone began to congregate there. The town of Yarmouth then enacted a similar ordinance, and the problem again ended. We do have a brief video. That's a police officer that's being showered with the fireworks. Councillor Jen Cullum stood behind the ordinance, drawing on her experience as a former shop owner. And I have to say that um, many people have contacted me about the, about the issue. Um, not one of them is a store owner, a convenience store owner, that would 
be open at those hours. Some of them are store owners, but not uh, not convenience store owners. Also, um, with what you just said, I think it probably some people have tapped into that for like the Black Friday sales or something at the mall. But one thing also is that there's nothing written in the ordinance that limits it to one night. So if a store owner did want to open between the hours of one and three, they could conceivably do it every week if they just got the green light from the town manager. So there definitely is that mechanism in place. Um, having been a store owner, and just when the bus stopped in front of my store, you just end up standing by the candy rack and holding on to your skirt because you don't know what's going out the door. It's really hard to manage. I, I can't imagine that anyone in those locations made a dime. It all went out the back, out the front. Um, because when you're overwhelmed like that, you just watch the register. That's yeah. all you do. And um, so for public safety, I, I completely support this. And, uh, and one of the complaints was, well, what if I'm hungry or I need gas? And my response was, well, pack a sandwich and gas up before you go to work. You know, I mean, you just have to plan ahead. Councilor Janet Jokum also stood behind the ordinance saying it was a public safety issue for all Barnstable residents. Um, one of the most important parts of this is that when there's seven police cars there, they're not anywhere else. The rest of us Correct. on the western part of the town have no police cars available. If there's an accident, you, I mean, you may end up calling in another, I don't know, another town or whatever. Um, it, this allows you to be available to everybody now during those hours. And I know it's always difficult anyways because when bars are closing, there's problems with driving in the bars themselves. So um, I just think it's important to note that we all benefit from this, not just the areas that we're having the problems. McDonald says that since the ordinance has been in effect, much of the problem of large groups congregating after bars close has been eliminated. A second cultural district could soon be created in the town of Barnstable. The High Arts District was created last year and has received several awards from the state, including the Creative Community Award. Last night, town council heard a resolution that would allow the town to work towards establishing a second cultural district in Barnstable Village. The district would be known as the historic Barnstable Village Cultural District. Barnstable Village resident Roberta Miller spoke in support of the effort before a vote was taken. We were established in 1639 and we have a proud history as one of the first settlements that was established by the British in the New World. And we have records in our archives relating the activities in our harbor. We have sea captains who lived in recognizable houses in the village watching for traders coming into the, our port and walking over to the Customs House, which is now our Coast Guard Heritage Museum, to collect tariffs. We can still see hitching posts from the 1800s and many homes that are on the National Register. The north side of Barnstable has a beautiful working harbor, with the whale watcher bringing in over 30,000 people in the summer season, an echo tour pontoon boat that educates visitors uh, about the dunes of Sandy Neck and the ecosystems of the marshes, fishing charter boats taking people out on the waterways, and a beautiful beach overlooking Sandy Neck and its historic lighthouse. We have many artists living and working in the village holding open studios, plein air painting and art festivals. Our active business and civic associations have built a community stage on the Barnstable County Courthouse lawn to hold concerts. And we sponsored other community events like the Stroll and the Fourth of July Parade. We have businesses that sponsor musical concerts and children's events. Uh, throughout the summer, and we're truly a destination for those historical sites, genealogical research, cultural events, and unique shops. Having a second cultural district in Barnstable with it will be a feather in your cap. This designation will provide more opportunities for economic development, for cross-promoting marketing strategies, for offering more to the visitors who come to the Mid-Cape for qualifying for an increased number of preservation grants and for helping to advertise that Barnstable supports the arts by providing many choices. So we encourage you to support this resolution. Town Council voted unanimously to support the creation of a cultural district in Barnstable Village. Town Council will meet again next Thursday, September 19th. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.